Adam, the White Hair Master. Season 2. Episode 9. In the previous episode, we followed Adam and Sarah to an insurance company to learn about two employees' deaths. While coming here, Adam discovered that three other employees were being followed by an evil force. At first, these three people thought that Adam was just a fraud. But after being shown by Adam with his own eyes the image of the shadow following him, the three immediately showed extreme panic. Not only the other three employees but Sarah was also startled. She discovered that there was also a small shadow following her. As soon as she saw the shadow of that child, Sarah's shoulders trembled slightly. Then she lowered her face and did not dare to look anymore. Her eyes were so sad right now. At Sarah's attitude, Adam reassured her that he had seen this baby before, but he didn't want to tell her because he was afraid she would be scared. For now, he will deal with the three black shadows here first and then deal with that child. Adam turned to ask all three employees if they noticed what was following them. For through their panic, Adam realized that they seemed to know the origin of this darkness. At Adam's question, all three remained silent. But Adam knew that they were hiding something. Adam went on to tell them that these shadows were not by chance, nor by chance that they followed someone. It was formed from the resentment and hatred of the dead, and he was sure they all knew who this person was. While his two colleagues were still silent and uncertain about making a decision, the employee named Bernie suddenly shouted as if he had discovered something. He realized that the three shadows on the glass were all the same person. That person was Edward, the man who jumped to his death a few days ago. After Bernie finished speaking, the other two employees, Gemma and David, realized the black shadow. Gemma turns to Bernie and shouts. She says this is impossible, Edward is dead, and he can't follow all three of them like that. Gemma's attitude was quite agitated, confirming Adam's speculation that Edward's death was related to these three people. After witnessing the attitudes of the three employees, Adam gently told them that everything in this world has a corresponding law of cause and effect. It was not without reason that Edward followed them like that. Adam advises the three to tell all the things that happened before to solve this problem. At that suggestion of Adam, the three just bowed their heads in silence. A few seconds later, David spoke up, saying that there was nothing between Edward and them. Then Gemma and Bernie continued to speak. They said that Edward is a new employee of the company. He is still on a probationary period. Since they were new employees, they knew almost nothing about Edward. Edward is also a quiet person at work, so they don't talk much, so there could be no friction between them and Edward. Realizing that these people still wanted to hide their wrongdoing, Adam had to use the death of the woman he met last time to warn them. Adam says, if they don't tell him the truth, he can't deal with this. Until then, ending up like that woman is inevitable. Hearing this, all three expressed surprise. They had always thought Daisy's death was just an accident. Daisy is the name of the woman Adam met three days ago. While the three employees were still immersed in confusion and hesitation, Jessie, the department's female head, spoke up. She said that Daisy's death was not a simple suicide. She watched security surveillance cameras record the moment before Daisy jumped off the roof. At that time, Daisy had very strange expressions, only now, she suddenly noticed when she heard Adam say. Jesse recounts that, after Daisy died, the police also came to investigate. The first thing they do is check the company's security cameras. At a few minutes before Daisy jumped down, she left her desk and went up to the rooftop, where Edward jumped off. Suddenly Daisy raised her hand and struggled, looking at her movements as if trying to resist some force. Just like that, the invisible thing pushed Daisy step by step back to the railing of the terrace. 
Then there was the sight of Daisy falling off the railing. Suspected that someone interfered with the video to cover up his crime. The police brought the video to check but found nothing because the video was completely unedited. As with Edward's death, the police could not find evidence to prove that Daisy was murdered, so they concluded that she committed suicide. But Jesse insists that Daisy was pushed down by some invisible force, but she did not want to. At what Jesse just said, the three employees became even more scared. Time passed for a few more minutes, but the three employees remained adamantly silent. Seeing that, Adam sighed in disappointment. He turned to Sarah and told her it was time for the two of them to leave. Because even if he stayed, it wouldn't help if they didn't want to. Then he and Sarah slowly opened the door to leave the room. But before Adam could leave the room, David called out to him. This seemed to be within Adam's expectation. A smile flickered across his lips, he paused and sighed. He told David that he couldn't help when people didn't want to tell him the truth about what had happened. Then the three employees took turns talking about the not-so-good things they had done to Edward. It turned out that these three people, along with Edward and Daisy, were all in the same group. Since Edward was a new employee, they bullied him. The first is David, who said that he borrowed 500 United States dollars from Edward but did not intend to pay it back, even though Edward was very broke. As Gemma often pushed Edward's work, she even blamed him when her superiors reprimanded her for the group's poor performance. The last one is Bernie, he said that he often asked Edward to do his part, but when Edward needed help, he refused. Bernie said he didn't think what he did lead him to come to such a negative decision. Finally, as the group leader, Daisy often scolds Edward with harsh words when the group's work results are not as expected. With the confession of three subordinates, Jesse was extremely angry. She didn't expect these people to treat new employees like this. According to Jesse, Edward is a rather pitiful person. He comes from a poor country. He always tries to earn more money. Jesse also blamed herself for not taking care of her subordinates more. Every time Edward stayed overtime, she simply thought that he was trying to get his job done. After hearing the story, Sarah was extremely dissatisfied with the behavior of the other three employees. But according to her, this often happens in other companies, it's not worth killing yourself for it. Hearing that, Adam told Sarah that Sarah hadn't been in that situation, so she didn't know. When life is under so much pressure, people easily make extreme decisions. Edward was also a sufferer, being bullied by his colleagues for a long time, adding to the financial pressure from his family that he couldn't take it anymore. Because she had witnessed Adam help the girl's soul in the bath to escape, Sarah wondered if Adam could do the same this time. She immediately turned and asked Adam. Adam said that the girl in the bathtub could escape because she accepted letting go of her resentment. In this case, Edward's soul is very angry. It is difficult to convince his soul to give up. Adam also added that in this case, the only way to go is to destroy all of Edward's resentment before it harms more people. After making it clear to Sarah, Adam took out a few things from the bag he used to carry around. After a few seconds of searching, he now had several exorcism coins and a red demon rope. Adam then asked all three staff members to stand together to prepare to cast the exorcism magic. Although they have seen with their own eyes the evil spirit is following them, it seems that these people still do not fully believe in Adam, now Bernie says to do what Adam tells them. They still seem pretty stubborn. They think that Edward is dead, now he is nothing more than a ghost, how can they harm them? But what happened to Daisy scared them. In the end, although a little reluctantly, they also began to do as Adam said. After the three of them had come together, Adam took out a brush and began to draw a circle of cinnabar around where the three of them were standing. 
After drawing the circle, Adam took an exorcism coin and tied it to one end of the rope that bound the demon. While tying Adam's coins, he instructed the other three employees, no matter what happened, they absolutely must not step out of this circle even half a step. Once everything was ready, Adam turned and told Sarah and Jesse to step back, away from him. According to Adam, this evil spirit was no longer an ordinary evil spirit. The resentment was so heavy that it became extremely powerful. Adam was afraid that while controlling the evil spirit, it would affect the people around him. Once he was certain that Sarah and Jesse were out of his calculated sphere of influence, Adam began casting spells. First, he twirled the rope with an exorcism coin tied at the end, and while spinning, he recited a mantra in his mouth. As soon as the incantation ended, Adam threw the rope in his hand towards the three standing employees. But Adam's target is not those employees, but the invisible thing behind them. All three staff members were surprised at Adam's actions. The demon rope looped many times in the air as if squeezing something. The red rope gets smaller and smaller, but it is still suspended in the air, creating an extremely strange scene. But when looking into the glass, everyone understood everything. From the reflection of the glass, a black shadow could be seen struggling. It was the evil spirit that was controlled by Adam using the demon rope. After locking the evil spirit, Adam stepped on one end of the rope with his foot so that the evil spirit could not escape. After making sure that the evil spirit he had just controlled could not escape, Adam then took out another demon rope and did the same thing as before. The target this time is the evil spirit following Bernie. But this evil spirit proved to be stronger than the evil spirit that Adam had just controlled. It constantly struggled to break free from the demon rope in Adam's hand. After struggling for a while, but to no avail, a hand emerged from the shadow, which quickly reached out towards Bernie. The evil spirit's fingers immediately dug deep into Bernie's back. The evil spirit's hand was inserted into Bernie's back and through the front. By this time, Bernie could clearly feel the presence of the evil spirit beside him. His chest was suddenly sharp and cold, as if a block of ice had pierced his body. Bernie couldn't stop screaming in fear as if he sensed death coming very close to him. Not giving the evil spirit enough time to harm Bernie. Adam immediately tugged at the rope in his hand. The evil spirit couldn't resist Adam's tremendous power, it was quickly dragged backward. Its hands were still reaching out towards Bernie as if not wanting to let go of him. Because this evil spirit resisted fiercely, Adam had to use a lot of strength to pull it out of Bernie's body. But also because of using too much force, the evil spirit was thrown into the glass, where Adam had drawn earlier the talisman. Immediately the body of the evil spirit shattered into many pieces, then turned into black smoke and gradually disappeared. Similarly, Adam continued to do the same with the other two evil spirits. He used a rope to bind the demons to draw them closer to the enchanted glass. Knowing that they were about to be destroyed, these evil spirits resisted fiercely, making it very difficult for Adam to pull them close to the glass. But no matter how fiercely they resisted, they could not escape. Adam quickly threw them into the glass, as soon as they touched the glass, just like the first evil spirit, their bodies also instantly shattered and turned into faint black smoke. Everything Adam just did was reflected in the glass, so Sarah could see it all. As soon as she saw that the last evil spirit had disappeared without a trace, Sarah immediately jumped for joy. She kept praising Adam, but as she was about to walk over to Adam, he suddenly yelled at her to stop. Adam says it's not over yet, and this is just the beginning. Just like what Adam said, when he finished speaking, the evil spirit returned. This time its size is no longer the same as before, 
but many times larger. As soon as she saw the image of the evil spirit reflected in the glass, Sarah cried out in fear and ran to hide behind the table with Jesse. At this moment, Sarah suddenly exclaimed. Adam instinctively raised his hand to help. He knew that while he was not paying attention, the evil spirit had attacked him. Although he was able to raise his hand to block the evil spirit's attack, its power was so great that he couldn't stand it. Adam was immediately thrown backward, hitting the table in the middle of the room. The impact was so strong that Adam felt numb, but the blow was still not enough to knock him down. Adam immediately sat up and observed the evil spirit before him. Judging from the size of this evil spirit, Adam could tell that Edward's resentment was immense. In the large body of the evil spirit, a series of painful and crying faces appeared and disappeared again and again. Adam knew that it was the psychological suffering that Edward had to endure before his death. It was those resentments that gave the evil spirit a terrible power. Now the evil spirit's target is no longer the people who treated it badly before. It turned all its anger on Adam, as if Adam stopping it from taking revenge made it unacceptable. It immediately rushed to attack Adam in a frenzy. Because he knew the terrible power of the evil spirit, Adam did not directly block the attacks of the evil spirit. He used his flexible body to dodge the dangerous attacks of evil spirits. The evil spirit became angrier and angrier, it continuously chased after Adam like a shadow. Since following his master, Adam has never encountered an evil spirit as powerful as this evil spirit. Surely what this evil spirit suffered while alive was not limited to what the staff said, and Edward had to endure it for a long time. Adam carefully dodged all attacks, as he knew that even a single hit by the evil spirit could kill him or seriously injure him. After a period of continuous dodging, Adam finally seized the opportunity to counterattack. When the evil spirit attacked, it did not hit the target and did not have time to withdraw its hand. Adam immediately swung the demon rope in his hand to form a circle. His purpose was to lock the arm of the evil spirit. Adam repeatedly wrapped the demon rope in many loops around the evil spirit's arm with lightning speed. In the face of Adam's control, the evil spirit did not succumb so easily, it constantly struggled to break free from Adam's bondage. The two struggled fiercely, resulting in the evil spirit's arm being cut into five, six segments by the red thread and falling to the ground. At this point, the evil spirit's anger reached its peak. The arm that had just been severed by Adam also helped it get out of control. It immediately created an arm even bigger than before and charged at Adam. Because he knew the attack method of the evil spirit, this time, Adam had no difficulty in controlling the evil spirit. Soon, the arm and all the body of the evil spirit were wrapped tightly by Adam with the demon ropes. Adam didn't want to have to fight an evil spirit that had to suffer so much more. He wanted to quickly end everything so that this poor soul could quickly escape. After being wrapped around the body by the demon rope, the evil spirit couldn't even fight anymore. Before taking action to destroy the evil spirit, Adam said a few words to him. Adam said that he was very sympathetic to what he had to endure, having been a victim of bullying himself. But above all, that's no excuse to take someone else's life. Also, according to Adam, the time is still early, it is not too late for Edward to be reincarnated. As soon as he finished speaking, Adam tugged at the demon's rope in his hand. Accordingly, the body of the evil spirit was also cut into small pieces. Pieces of the evil spirit's body fell to the floor one by one, turning into black smoke and slowly disappearing. Soon, the pieces of the evil spirit's body had all disappeared, leaving only a few small fragments. At this time, Edward's face also gradually appeared, 
it was an angry face. It seems that what Adam just said to the evil spirit had no effect. Even now, Edward's soul still can't let go of hatred. In a last-ditch effort, Edward's face tried to look at the people who had trampled him. As soon as they met that gaze, all three employees did not tell anyone, and at the same time, lowered their heads. They did not dare to face him with those eyes. Slowly, what was left of the evil spirit also disappeared completely, leaving behind a faint black smoke on the floor. Witnessing everything through the reflection of the glass and hearing what Adam had just said, Sarah wasn't as excited as before. She slowly approached Adam and asked if he had completely destroyed this soul. Adam shook his head and said that he only destroyed Edward's resentments. But for Edward to be reincarnated, he must completely let go of everything. Then Adam told Sarah that he wanted to go home. He didn't want to stay and see the people here any longer. After walking a few steps, Adam suddenly stopped. Still not looking back at the three staff members, Adam said that Edward's death was responsible for all of them. If they want to atone for Edward, then pray for his soul to be released soon. After saying that, Adam decisively walked away. While waiting for the elevator, Sarah tells Adam that she doesn't want it to end like this. From the faces of the three of them, Sarah realized that they still seemed to think that Edward's death had nothing to do with them. She wanted them to be punished for what they did. At Sarah's attitude, Adam only gently advised her to calm down. He said that everything is not over yet, in three years, if these people still do not repent for what they have done, they will have to pay the real price. Hearing this, Sarah was startled. She did not expect things to be so complicated. But Sarah seems to be very pleased with the outcome. She then turned to Adam and asked if everything was settled. But why did Adam seem preoccupied with something else, since she didn't find him as happy as usual? Silence for a moment, Adam spoke up. He said he was still thinking about the child following Sarah. After a few more seconds of silence, finally, Adam did not hide anymore. He directly said that it was Sarah's child. After hearing that, Sarah's body trembled slightly and then fell silent. 